If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show. And if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show. And if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. Sixth grade can make some noise! If you can hear me clap once, you can hear me clap twice, everybody clap your hands. Keep clapping, keep clapping. Freeze! Man, come on, I love you guys so much. Make some noise for yourselves, come on! All right, guys, I need your attention just for the next few minutes. Just for the next few minutes, I would love it. Hey, you can hear me clap once? Come on, I need it dead silent in here. I have a really important conversation that I want to have with you all. It's the last day of camp. Come on, like, boo, come on. Like, don't you wish that you could stay at camp like for like another couple days, like at least a week? Anybody like, please, I don't want to go back to school. Can I just stay at camp? I get it, I get it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, thank you all so much for having me here. My name is Nigel, uh, and I get to spend just a few minutes with you all having an incredible conversation about influence. Influence, say it with me, influence. influence. Say it one more time, influence. influence. Say it like you mean it this time, influence. influence. Okay, okay, you mean it, you mean it, I get it, okay. This idea of influence, we get to talk about that uh, and, and I want to talk about camp, and I was thinking, like I was, I was preparing to come and spend time and have this conversation with you all, preparation is so important. And being here at camp this weekend, you have gotten to experience the presence of God. You've gotten to fellowship with your friends and get to know one another. You got to meet people from other parts of the city, other parts of, of Atlanta, uh, and you just got to connect. And, and you don't get to just come here for no reason. This is a place of preparation. Because how many of you know that tomorrow is Monday? Oh, I know. All right, all right, all right. Tomorrow is Monday, and, and you're going to go back out into your communities. You're going to go back into your schools. And hopefully, listen to me, listen to me, just a few minutes together. Hopefully, you'll be able to take some of what you received this weekend and go back and give it to people who desperately need it. There are a lot of people who wish they could have been here at sixth grade camp, but unfortunately they didn't get to come. But the beautiful thing about you coming and experiencing this time here together with your peers and other people who love God is that you get to take what you received this weekend and go back out and give it to people who desperately need it. Somebody said amen right there. Amen. All right. Well, I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, I know that you're in middle school right now, but like, is anybody excited to be out of middle school and like get to high school? Okay. Anybody, listen, listen to me. Anybody, you're like, you're so visionary thinking in your brain. You're like, man, I, I want to just skip high school and go straight to college. Okay, 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 okay. Well, I want to tell you all a little bit. Listen to me, listen to me. Need your attention. I want to tell you all a little bit about my college experience. Has anybody ever heard of Marshall University before? Anybody? Oh, make some noise. All right, make some noise for Marshall University. Go her. I went to Marshall University for four years, and it was so much fun. Fun, not fun, but fun. It was so much fun. And over the course of my four years, I learned so much, and I got to meet so many awesome people. I got to take trips, and I received a degree after four years. But after my third year was over, going into my last year, there was like this sense of urgency in my heart. I was like, man, it's getting ready to be over with, and I don't want to do school anymore because it's taking the life out of me. Okay, anybody can relate? Sixth grade, okay? <laughs> Well, college, college is a completely different experience. You'll get there one day. But as I'm coming up on my fourth year, I'm like, man, I've got to do something to leave my mark on this school. I've got to do something to be remembered, and I want to do something that's memorable in my mind that I can reach back and pull on in times of need. And so there is this really important title at Marshall University. There's this really important title at Marshall University. It's not student body president. It's not president of a particular club or, or, or being at the top of any kind of ranks in any kind of the academic things that are happening on campus. But the title 
is Mr. Marshall University. And there's also, for the ladies, Mrs. Marshall University, okay? Two incredible positions where essentially you get to be the face of the university for a year. You get to go to Congress at the Capitol in your state and be represented. You get to speak into really important situations. And I was like, y'all, this is my opportunity. Like, this is my chance. I'm going to become somebody. So what am I going to do? I want to create a campaign. So what I do, I started going business cards. I I'm walking across campus having small conversations with people. And then I was like, well, social media is kind of like booming right now. What if I created a social media campaign where more people than people that I can just see on a grounds level walking across campus can get their eyes on this thing? Where are my baseball players at? OK, softball players. Make some noise for yourself. OK. OK, OK. Football players. Okay. Soccer players. Okay. How many of y'all, you just like, I'm a student, man. I love school. Okay. Parents, small group leaders, we need to pray for that selection of students. Bring it in, bring it in real quick. Where are the cheerleaders at? Okay, okay. Now, I'm asking, listen to me, listen to me. I need it silent in here. Come on. Just a couple minutes. Y'all. I was like, you know what would be the best part of my campaign if I went around to each of these teams and each of these clubs and not just had conversations with them, but what if we recorded a little video that could start off the marketing campaign? I actually brought the video to show y'all today. I mean, come on, y'all. You can make some noise for that right there. You know how many ice packs I had to put on my back after that video, man? That backflip made no joke. But look, listen, listen. But it worked. It worked. It was viral. People on social media all across campus were seeing this video. And y'all, what ended up happening? I ended up winning, y'all. And I brought a picture of that right there. Make some noise! I mean, it was incredible. I had so much fun, man. Close your eyes with me real quick. Just go with me to a place. Imagine that you're in the middle of a football field, 50-yard line. Okay, 50, 50, we there? If you're there, say yeah. Okay. Now imagine that the stadium is filled with 50,000 people. I know, I know. If you can envision that, say yeah. yeah. All right, so now you're in the middle of the football field, 50,000 people. Now, your heart rate picks up a little bit because you realize that they might not call your name. And then they call your name, and the whole place erupts. I said they call your name, and the whole place erupts. Come on. Oh, it was incredible, y'all. They even memed me. They turned me into a meme. Like, I mean, it was incredible. Anybody, y'all, wrestling fans in here? Wrestling fans? Me too. Stone Cold Steve Austin, they turned me into a meme. It was crazy, man. But, but why do I tell you that? Why do I tell you that story? I tell you that story, y'all, because all good things come to an end. All good things come to an end. And just like I came to the end of my college career, you are coming to the end of camp. And you're like, well, what's the point of you telling me that? Well, like I said at the intro, when I was talking and introducing this idea of influence, everything that you have consumed, everything you've learned this weekend, everything that you've been taught, everything that the Lord spoke to you this weekend, it's not just for you, it's for other people. And when we leave camp after weekends like this weekend, you can believe this lie right here. I don't have influence. And I'm not talking about followers on social media. I'm not talking about having a big platform that use your voice or doing something cool in your community. I'm talking about influence. Being able to have a conversation with someone who's brokenhearted, having a conversation with someone who is hurt, having a conversation and being a safe place for someone who might be struggling with some stuff that's going on in their home. So I don't want you to believe this lie leaving camp this weekend that you don't have influence because you do. In fact, I've, I brought a truth to replace that lie with, and that's that every child of God has unbelievable influence. Somebody said amen right there. Amen. Every child of God has unbelievable influence. And if you don't believe me, I brought some scripture with me today to back up these points that I'm making, okay? So look, I want you to know all of this. Somebody said read. read. Somebody said read. read. Okay, I'm going to read it to you right now. It said, here's another way to put it. This is Jesus talking. You're here to be alike, bringing out the God colors in the world. God is not a secret to be kept. 
And we're going public with this, as public as a city on a hill. He goes on to say this, if you make, if I make you light bearers, you don't think that I'm going to hide you under a bucket, do you? I'm putting you on a light stand. Now that I've put you there on a hilltop on a light stand, shine. Somebody says shine. shine. He goes on to say this. This is important. Keep open house. Be generous with your lives. By opening up to others, you'll prompt people to open up with God. This generous father in heaven. This is beautiful. Imagine that it was completely dark in here right now. Just imagine that. Maybe you're going to close your eyes right now. And it actually gets dark in here. And then imagine, imagine that you have a ridiculous light inside of you that you cannot help but shine. You know, the funny thing about this is I was thinking about, listen with me, listen with me. The crazy thing about this is when I was thinking about the darkness that, that Jesus was referring to in all these passages of scripture, and I think about the brokenness that's happening in the world and in your communities and in your schools, I was reminded of how beautiful it is that when we get to come to weekends like this and be here at camp, it's so that we can have more light instilled inside of us because when we go back to reality on Monday, we're gonna encounter darkness, we're gonna encounter brokenness, we're gonna encounter curiosities, questions, people are gonna make fun of you because of your faith. But realistically, God has called you to be a light And the light that you're receiving here this weekend is one that you're meant to shine out in the world. Now, it's going to stay dark. But imagine if imagine if you you received all this information and all this goodness this weekend and and God spoke to you so clearly. And you were like, you know what, I'm just going to. I'm going to hide this information. I'm going to keep God a secret. I don't want anybody to know about my experience at camp. The world stays dark if you do that. But how many of you know here at sixth grade camp? that you are called to be a light, that anywhere you go, you have the ridiculous ability to make the situation better. You have the ridiculous ability to influence your peers and to influence your parents, even by the way that you obey them and the way that you love on them. You're called to be a light. Somebody said light. Light. I said somebody said light. Light. One more time like you mean it. Somebody said light. light. That is right. And then the lights miraculously came back on. Now, why do I share this? Listen, listen, we just got a few minutes together. Why do I share this with you? It's because of this point right here. The whole world has questions because of its brokenness. And we get to give others answers because of God. Anybody out there, you just got that friend. It's like, man, this, this, this person needs Jesus and they lie. I mean, come on, like how many of us? Okay, okay, students, hands down. Parents, adults. How many of y'all got that, like, you got that family member? You know what I'm talking about? Oh, Lord Jesus, all the hands went up. They need Jesus in their life. The brokenness that they've experienced, maybe the trauma they've experienced, the, the, the undesirable experience that they've encountered has created in them a brokenness that it shuns them from God. They don't want anything to do with God. They're angry with God. They've got all these emotions, and they don't know how to feel based on what they've experienced. But how many of you know that this second half of this issue is this? We get to give others answers because of God. You have unbelievable influence. And through your reading of scripture, through spending time in your small groups, getting to know people, building community, through your time of prayer, where you speak to God and God speaks to you, and it's this beautiful idea of communion, you get to be a solution for all the issues that exist in the world. And I actually have another passage of scripture I want to share with you. Think about Jesus for a second, okay? We're talking about the most influential man to ever walk the face of earth. Jesus, in Scripture, it it shows us that it says here, for even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Can we just be vulnerable for a second in here? How many people have you realized that maybe you have influence? Maybe you have a gift of communication. You have this ability to kind of work and talk your way out of any situation or maybe. Oh, okay. Parents, parents, look around. The hands is up. The hands is up. Okay, you know who to keep your eye on. But how many of us, if we can just be real for a second in here, we have misused our abilities and our gifts to get what we want. This is what I like to see. Maybe more hands should even go in the air because all of us at some point or another, even if we haven't acted on it, we've been tempted to use the gifts that God has blessed us with to get what we want and bring ourselves glory. Okay, 
And this idea of influence, God wants to use you to influence others, but you have to understand what your gifts are meant for, which brings me to my next point, and I'm getting ready to close us. It says, these lives that we live here at sixth grade camp, back out in your schools and in communities, these gifts that we've been given, your ability to sing, your ability to draw, maybe you're just a really joyful person, and you have the ability to step in a room and just light that place up because your presence is there. Those things are gifts, but they're not meant just for us and our influence. They're meant to give glory to God. Anybody know what glory means? By definition, I won't call on you and make you answer. I'm going to tell you. Okay. Glory, it means honor. Glory means attention. Glory means a deep respect and, and, and reverence of attention. It means to worship and praise. How many people just love worship and praise? You like jumping up and down. You like count me in. You like, yeah, I mean, come on. I mentioned all of these things. Listen, listen, we just got a couple more minutes. I mentioned all of these things, guys. Because these lives that we have, these gifts that God has given us, the influence, hey guys, real quick, we're almost done. The influence that he has blessed us with is not meant to give worship and glory and honor and and praise to us. It's meant to be a reflection of who God is in our community so that people give glory to him. Which brings me to my bottom line, and I'm getting ready to close this. This is the last thing I'll say. You got to believe this. If you don't if you don't remember anything else from any other conversation that someone else from this stage had, if you don't remember any other thing that a conversation you had with a friend, any a, a quote from this week, I want you to remember this and walk away because it's really easy to come to camp and we get super hyped up and we get high on camp and then we go back home and it's it. But I want you to remember this if you don't remember anything else. And as God wants to do amazing things in you. Listen, guys, we're almost done. And through you by having you influence other people. Now, now, what does this mean? God wants to do amazing things in you. When you're walking with Jesus, you don't just get to look at the life of Jesus and like, oh, man, that's really cool. Maybe I can try to live like that. He actually, when we're in Christ, he blesses us with this thing called the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit, when you ask your small group leaders, talk a little bit more about this. We should be talking about this even in sixth grade, okay? Like this is a preparation for you all. There's this radical transformation that happens inside. You start to understand what your emotions mean. You start to understand what it means to question your thoughts and wrestle with things that you feel. Uh, And this transformation that God wants to do in us over time is to make us more like him. In fact, the word Christian means to be many Christ or Christ like. So we don't just get to look at Jesus's life and aspire to be like that. We can actually live in transformation the way that he did. Loving on people, bringing joy to people, speaking truth into situations that are harmful and hurt filled. Somebody said amen right there. So he wants to do this work in you to transform you so that he can do a work through you. But if we focus on him doing the work through us and we miss the fact that he wants to do a work in us, we blow our influence, guys. And so it's important for us to know if we don't know anything else, he wants to change in us and make us more like him, that we can go out and bless other people to give glory and attention to him so that they might encounter him and have that same kind of change happen inside of them as well. So when we go home, what are we going to do? I want you to say influence. influence. So when we go home, what are we going to do? Influence. That's right. We're going to step into dark situations. We're going to step into painful times and we're going to shine our light. Somebody say light. light. We're going to shine our light. Let me pray for us. Every head bowed, eyes closed, please. Lord Jesus, we love you so much and we thank you for the privilege of sixth grade camp. Thank you for this entire weekend, Friday, Saturday, and even today, God, that you have blessed us with a place where we can come and canoe and kayak and jump off of floats and be in boats and come and listen to your word and have someone explain to us what it is that you want to say. We thank you for worship and music, that it's a way to express our gratitude and our thankfulness to you and your beauty, God. Uh, And in this, God, I want to pray specifically for two more things, God. I just pray that Lord, that there will be an excess of deodorant, Lord, because it, you know, it smells a little bit. And I'm not going to lie, like, so we, we pray for more deodorant, God. And we also pray uh, for the two people earlier who were caught on the stage and they stepped on those crabs. God, we just pray that you would forgive them, Lord, in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen.